You might think Tuca and Birdie is too detailed and psychedelic to possibly catch every joke. We felt the same, so we made our list of our favorite details just for you. Number one, unless your job is at this bakery, these jokes are not safe for work. Whoa, Pastry Pete's Patisserie. When we see Tuca and Birdie go into Pastry Pete's for the first time, after chasing that turtle with the sugar on its back. Give us back our sugar, you half wet, half dry, full slime booger. Birdie takes a look at some of his pastries for sale. What you might not have noticed is that some of the pastries are a bit interesting. Some of the names for his pastries are dough b****s, apple dips, and quickies. Those quickie cookies do look good, though. Very croissant -y. Number two, Tuca is a toucan of exquisite taste. I love books, and this, this is a book I've been meaning to read, so... <laughs> when we see Tuca's book collection, some of them include The Taste of Eggs, Quit Boozing for Birds, Dr. Garlic's Garlic Remedies, and I'm Dancing as Fast as I Too Can. We also couldn't help but notice that she keeps all of her books in a broken drum. A broken drum she probably got off the side of the street, no doubt. Classic Tuca. I know! I'm so nasty. I bring a lot of zest to my environment. Number three, there's nothing water cooler than office jokes. Ah, uh, you know it, Duck. All right. <laughs> At Birdie's office, there are several cork boards that can be seen in the background. What you might not have noticed is that most of these cork boards have the same two pink and yellow posters on them. The posters read Casual Pirate Wednesdays and Happy Soft Hump Day. Side note, more people should celebrate a soft hump day. Number four, ever go to a presentation and think, am I the same as every person here? Well, during the very strange donut dive at Yeast Week, we get a close up at three fans who are clearly having the time of their lives. What you might not have noticed is that they have what could possibly be the most fun names for three fans sitting next to each other at one of these events. Their passes show their names as, in order from left to right, Terry, Larry, and Barry. Talk about meeting your twin, or triplet, I guess. Hi. Number five. Poor Dakota not only missed the hints that the city would be tough, but also missed this hilarious joke. Mama, don't worry. I know I'm just a country canary who moved to the big city. Among many other questionable stores, one of the things that Dakota with a Y passes during her first walk through the city is Fanny's Emporium. The store sells something that relates to your backside. While the store itself might be a little obvious, what you might not have noticed is the sign that reads parking in rear. This is double entendre at its finest. Number six, we head back to the Yeast Festival for more than just delicious donuts. Near the beginning of Birdie's trip to Yeast Fest, the most elite convergence of baking's boldest and brightest, there is a little blue bird that can be spotted in the foreground. What you might not have noticed the first time watching is what happens to her gorgeous blue feathers. This poor bird goes to check on her baked goods only to get a full face of fire. Her eyes say it all in that last photo, instant regret. Seems like a missed opportunity for a fried chicken joke, but we'll forgive him. I can't force you to make the right decision for your career. Number seven. Some jokes take a second to get, and some are just way too on the nose. When Birdie feels too subpar to go to work, she thinks that work will go on without her. I couldn't handle anything today. No, everything's probably falling apart at work and everyone hates me. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Birdie's presentation gets moved to the next day, and in the meantime, all the other staff get to watch Beat Club instead of working. We had to postpone Birdie's presentation, so let's watch a movie! This is a bird-based parody of the film Fight Club. But they didn't make a fighting bird joke or anything, just replace the word fight with beat. It's almost funnier because of the small amount of effort put into the bit. Either way, her co-workers were very happy about it. Number eight, always read the fine print. When Tuka's aunt writes her a check as she is leaving her mansion, she makes sure to write in the memo that she is mooching money. You love mooching off my money. First of all, rude. Oh, did I hit a nerve? And in such neat printing, too. That is just not okay. You're really roasting me hard tonight. Side note, why does she only give Tuka $1,275? She lives in the city, so most of that money would go toward her rent. If her aunt was really giving her enough money to live off, then she would give her enough money for food too. Not as moochy as she'd like. Number nine. On our continuing trend of low committed jokes is the subject of calendars. Throughout the show, you can see calendars in the background. The thing that you might have missed, though, is that all the months start with the word bird. So in this example, this might be for November or December. Not everything makes sense in this avian world of Tuca and Birdie. Let's schedule a follow-up meeting to figure out how this works next for Denver. Or maybe Birdgus? No, 
Uh, not exactly. Number 10. Oh, you thought the bird puns were done. Not a chance, my friend. <sighs> what now? While Bertie's place of work should be more professional than this, there is graffiti in the bathroom stalls when she goes in there. Some of the choice phrases include, Kevin is a bad lay, and Eric is a rotten egg. One of those is much more scathing than the other, but it's true that Kevin is a bad character. Don't trust him. This rooster guy I work with is ruining my life today. Number 11. This is less of a things you missed list and more of a how to write for Tuca and Bertie tutorial. Since our characters are young, hip birds of a feather, they obviously keep up to date on the most popular social media apps. One of these is Facebeak, a pretty obvious parody of Facebook. Well, at least a little more obvious than Beak Club. Or is it? You decide. Isn't that your job? Shh. Here's a pamphlet. Number 12. Another little fact about Tuca and her book collection. Remember when Tuca was awkwardly dodging questions from Bertie at the bookstore in episode three? When she did that, she picked up a random book called A Complete History of European Farm Equipment to start reading. Well, it turns out that she actually bought it and added it to her collection, or at least got it home somehow. Number 13, are you worried about where your toilet paper comes from? Then listen on. Are you serious, sir? In episode four of the first season, if you take a closer look under the row of judges at the store, you can see two of the products for sale from the grocery store. One is a vegan toilet paper, and the other is a 48 pack of sawdust bars. Now, one might say that these products are taking vegan culture a bit too far, but you can never be too careful about where your important paper products come from. Number 14. This might be the best joke on the list. When Tuca and Birdie visit Piles for some wholesale purchases, the aisles reveal some pretty great jokes as Birdie hops by. These include noodle by the foot, sugar by the lick, and our personal favorite, party cups by the bro. We're more used to cereal and cookies written on these kinds of signs, so these jokes are a very welcome change. Number 15. Even birds feed the birds. In the first episode of the final season, while Tuca is giving a tour of the city, at the end of the scene in the foreground, you can catch this bird feeding some ducks. It's a quick shot, so you might not have noticed this is a bird feeding the ducks from a park bench half submerged. Now, if it were a duck feeding the ducks, it would have earned a few extra points from us, but still pretty funny, even though now it opens up the dilemma of how ducks in our world fit into a world full of bird-like people. Is it like a bunch of mini humans walking around? Those were all our favorite references to Tuca and Birdie we noticed. Any you noticed that we didn't mention? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe for more animated content. And thanks for watching The Things Animated.